Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making chicken cacciatore. So let's get started. To make this delicious dish, you need bone-in skin on chicken thighs, onion, garlic, carrot, some diced tomatoes and tomato paste, crushed red pepper, salt and pepper, some dry white wine, baby bella mushrooms, but any will do, green and red bell peppers, a little bit of olive oil, some thyme, oregano, and for garnish, parsley or a little bit of basil. First off, we're doing some prep work, starting by patting those chicken thighs dry with a paper towel, and then we're gonna sprinkle on half a teaspoon of salt all over, and of course, some pepper too. Flip them over, a little bit more seasoning, now that my chicken's seasoned, I'm gonna get two tablespoons of olive oil onto a deep pan. I love these uh, cast iron enameled skillets because they really maintain heat. Okay, we're gonna swirl that olive oil around so it coats everything. And unlike a lot of recipes where you get the oil really hot and then you add the meat in, here, we're adding it into a cold pan. It's gonna help us with browning and help us cook this chicken through because nothing is worse than raw chicken. I'm placing it skin side down. It's gonna really brown up nicely and all of the fat underneath the skin is gonna emulsify or just melt and mm, flavor that chicken nicely. Chicken thighs and all the dark meat don't get enough credit in my do. And you can let me know in the comments if you're like not a fan of the light meat on chickens. Now we're gonna place this pan over medium high heat. Get this started. This is gonna cook for about 10 minutes undisturbed. A lot of times if you're cooking something that's sticky, like this chicken skin can be, it's gonna be horrible if you move it around. If you let it stay until it's ready, it'll release perfectly and be crispy and golden. So just give it about 10 minutes. And in the meantime, we're gonna do all of our prep. So one of the reasons I love this recipe is that there's like no downtime. The chicken's going, I'm doing some chopping, and before you know it, the whole thing is gonna be ready. In case you're wondering, you could have totally used two bell peppers that are the same color, or if you hate bell peppers, you can skip them. It's really up to you, and um, to be honest, like. If it's not a delicious bell pepper, I wouldn't use it. Because bell peppers should be amazing and flavorful. And if you get them off season, sometimes they're just like, tastes like nothing, super disappointing. The whole reason you're adding green and red is just to make this a colorful, vibrant dish. Chicken cacciatore is like a central Italian dish and there's many different versions of it, but it actually translates to hunter's chicken. Um, and if you're wondering like, hunter's chicken, chickens don't need to be hunted. They just like, they're just kind of there. Uh, this dish was originally probably used with more of a rabbit or some other game that you actually would hunt. And today it's popular just because it's like a one dish, very few pans to clean, and uh, it's really tasty and easy. Just giving this onion an easy dice too. Nothing here is like fancy knife work. I'm adding four or so cloves of garlic. You know, it's totally up to you how much you add. I always like to shell the garlic myself and get that skin off. The easiest way to do that is just to give it a smash with the flat part of your knife. It's gonna release the skin and also help you release some of the oils in there too. This gets a little bit of a mince. My last bit of prep work is just to peel one big carrot. Give me this carrot a slice and then a quick dice. It makes it so much easier. And one thing you wanna be careful of is just to not have like big pieces like that, they should all be somewhat uniform. Doesn't have to be perfect, but similar-ish. Thankfully, my mushrooms came pre-sliced, although that's really easy. And just like that, all of my prep work is done. All I'm waiting for is for that chicken to be ready to flip over, so super easy. After about 10 minutes, your chicken is ready to turn over. Just be gentle when you're lifting it up because even though it's been time, there might be a little bit of sticking. There we go, mmm, nice and golden. We're gonna cook this for about five minutes or until it's browned. In the meantime, you know, just measure out whatever else you need. Like you can chop your parsley, open up your cans, the wine, etc. After about five to six minutes, you'll see these guys release really easily. They're beautifully browned and you can just set them aside to rest on a plate while we cook up all the delicious things that go with this hunter's chicken. And also you'll notice there's way more stuff in the frying pan than the olive oil we added. All that delicious fat for the chicken has seeped out and it's gonna flavor everything else. 
Right now I'm gonna add the onion in along with about half a teaspoon of salt. Now it's time to add in the carrots and the bell peppers and they're gonna get crisp tender over the course of six to eight minutes. So stir, 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 let everything soften up and then we're gonna add the garlic. Mmm, this smells so good. Right now I'm gonna add in my garlic as well as those sliced mushrooms, it's eight ounces. So this gets stirred until the mushrooms like, you know, change color, they shrink up a bit. It'll be about five more minutes or so. This dish is gonna take on a lot of flavor as you cook things down. So really make sure those mushrooms are cooked so you get that much more flavor out of them. And then towards the end, you're gonna of course taste and season more because without a little bit of extra salt, hmm, it might not be that great. Once your mushrooms have cooked a bit, we're gonna add ooh, a good amount of tomato paste, maybe six ounces. I gave some fresh thyme a chop. You could also use dried thyme. And I'm gonna add two teaspoons of oregano. Stir all of that together. The tomato paste is really gonna add a depth of flavor and give you the base to the sauce. So right now you can see it's almost like caramelized tomato. It's really good. One cup of that dry white wine. This is gonna go into the pan and deglaze everything. It's also gonna add even more flavor to your chicken cacciatore. Just don't stop stirring for this three minute period when the uh, tomato paste is here because it's really working its way into all of the veggies. Right now I'm also adding in a pinch or two of red pepper flakes. They really add some nice heat. Maybe two pinches, there we go. That wine evaporated off. I'm adding in another half teaspoon of salt. And here's the deal. I have a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, but I poured off and reserved some of the tomato juice. I don't want this to be too watery, so it's more of a diced tomato than the tomato water. Stir in your diced tomatoes, and at the same time, I'm reducing this to medium low, and the chicken's gonna go back in now. This chicken was browned, not cooked all the way through. Nestle the chicken into the sauce. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> now it's gonna cook all the way through. So you need to cook this chicken all the way through. Bone-in takes a little bit more time, but it has so much extra flavor, it's totally worth it. Let's nestle that in there. It just fits, just barely. Now we're gonna partially cover this and let this cook away for about 25 minutes or until a thermometer tells you that the deepest part of that chicken is at 165. That's how you know when it's done. There we go. My chicken is done. We're gonna take this off of heat, garnish with some parsley, and we're ready to enjoy. You can have this with rice, pasta by itself or more veggies. I'm plating this up for dinner. Everyone in my house loves chicken cacciatore. A little bite won't spoil my appetite. Mmm, that sauce has the most amazing depth of flavor. Oh my gosh, everything came together and it's delicious. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my chicken playlist.